Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a Universal Roots and Global Artist Ambassador for Phoenix 360. And I'm blessed to be joined today by the reggae legend, Yami Bolo. Yami, how are you, brother? Good to see you. Yes, good afternoon. Blessed. Give thanks again and a bless up to the eye and bless up to the wonderful people of the world and all the people over there in California and around the world. Blessed love. Blessed morning. Uh, blessed love to you, my brother. And I'm so pleased and actually feel honored to be with you and looking forward to sharing your journey, Yami, in these multiple decades in which you've been delivering reggae music to the masses around the world. You're truly a global reggae ambassador to the world. And I'd love to uh, share some of your music if we can uh, before we get started in learning about that journey. So with your permission, okay, if we tune in to the track that you recommend, which is Love is Keeping Us Together? Yes, yes, it's okay, yes. Yes, all right, beautiful. All right, everyone, let's tune in to Yami Bolo with Love Keeping Us Together. All right, music. Love is the answer. Hi, hi, hi. Love, is the, Love answer. is the answer. The world is thirsty for love today. So much war is going around in the world today. The further you look, the more you'll see that love lifted you higher. The longer we live, the more we learn is love keeping us together. Cause only love can save the human race Let's start giving love before it's too late Then find the joy in going outer space Love will make 
Yami, beautiful, man. It's great to share your music with everyone. Thank you. Now, listen, can you tell me, where are you from and how did this journey for you begin? Well, we are from, um, from Kingston, Jamaica. Uh -huh. um, Kingston 13. Uh, that's where I'm from originally. Kingston 13. Uh, my mother, Beverly Manuel, father, Clarence McLean. Created Yami Bowl. Uh, Roland McLean, they created. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Give thanks. That's excellent. So being from Kingston, and that place is such kind of a, a sacred birthing place of so much soulful music. Can you tell me, Yami, when you perhaps at a tender age, how did you discover that music was your thing? Oh, like about early, from like three, three years old. <laughs> Um, I was going to a thing called uh, basic school, yeah. not primary school yet. Uh, so three years old, and at those times they gave me a mic at the Sosaka Basic School to sing. And uh, the mic, it was a, it had a static. It shocked me, and I was telling them that the mic shocked me, but they wanted me to sing. So I was a little scared that you know it, some electricity got me, and they were like booing me, and then I. Uh, Developed the courage and started to sing, and this, and it was like, yeah, you know. So from yeah. early, I realized that when you get the mic, you can't um, stay too long to sing. And from that time, I, you know, I started to see that music is my direction, you know, because I, I, um, I had music in my bloodline. My mother was a harmony singer, uh -huh. and uh, I had some, I had music in my bloodline. I just never knew. So that's what happened. It came out in me <laughs> trying right, to pursue exactly. as a career. Something you in know. your DNA and also something in your soul that wanted to, in essence, create through music. So yes, and I and I love actually that first time you actually got shocked by the mic. That's that that you know it's like you were um, in essence baptized with electricity <laughs> to uh, to become you know this inspirator of reggae yes. music you know so listen how about reggae music were there other kinds of artists and things that in influenced you that maybe as you started to progress as getting older that that made you want to be a performer well as a child while i was in the ghetto um in kingston 13 teaching school on the zinc fence to some young um, students that i had this vision of being a teacher uh -huh. And while I was teaching, uh, Sugar Minot right hand man called Nabi Roy introduced me to Sugar Minot uh, Youth Man Promotion. He said, boy, you can't sing. I said, yeah, I can sing, but I don't know how to get into the music business. So he said, I should meet him at Sugar Minot studio tomorrow. Come and see him there. And so the next morning, I, I was at Sugar Minot studio. I read it, you know. Yeah. I'm, when I had Sugar Man at studio, I started the drum, the piano, everything. And I didn't want to go back home. So I started to live with Sugar Man at, you know, at the sound system, sleeping on the sound box and trying to get the knowledge of the music and try to play the instruments. I told myself I could play, but I needed more, you know, knowledge. Right. <laughs> I keep teaching myself, you know, each time I get the opportunity to meet the greats. They would teach me something, you know, like if I, uh, uh, while at Sugar Minot, I met with uh, Juna Delgado, uh -huh. who came and saw me and told Sugar Minot, I want to take Yami Bolo because you have a lot of star over here. And Yami, he has something. And while with Juna Delgado, he introduced me to Augustus Pablo, uh -huh. who was the musician, the dub pioneer, pioneer uh, melodica player from King Toby's Rockers days, you know. And we joined the Rockers International Band with Augustus Pablo, Juno Delgado, and White Mice. And we began touring. But before that, we had already circled Jamaica and two sound system, which is Youth Man Promotion, where it all started. Uh -huh. And then Skandam Sounds, Terramar Sound, that we used to travel around Jamaica, mix and cranny, trying to promote the name Yamebolo. And when the name Yamebolo was um, all over Jamaica now. It was time to take it into England. 
and then she send us up in England with the sound system to do the same promotion, promoting the name Yami Bolo and promoting other artists that was um, on human promotion as well. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really and interesting. That is I, mean, I, I love to hear about some of the mentors that you've had with Sugar Minet and, and others who have, in essence, helped, you know, recognized in you kind of, you know what I mean, this spark. Um, and so let, let me ask this question then, you know, um, you mentioned going to England and you've been places are all around the world. You know, what, what, what places in the world have, you know, have you felt very embraced by or were inspired by having visited and performed? Well, the first place um, I visited outside of Jamaica uh -huh. was England. And, and uh, when I go to, when I went to England, uh, perform in the Finsbury Park. Mm. And when I say, gonna take it easy, one, you know, um, they tore down the, 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 the fence. They tore down the fence to come and see me, like rush, bam rush. <laughs> <laughs> bam rush the park. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I was happy to see that, you know, a tear up at the pants, youth family at the ghetto can cast the people to act like that. Sure. And I knew something was happening you know i was i felt great because i was only doing it in doing it on the sound system and now in the park they're rushing the stage yeah right yeah. and i said wow i love that feeling now i love being on that stage yeah yeah man and being in the front and actually leading and inspiring that much kind of energy right yeah so yes and, and listen were there any particular cultures or places in the world that you enjoyed going that you know inspired you when you were there you know i'm just interested in like for example you know you you in england japan and, and 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 other and other places right well in japan um we had a number two song on the pop chart but under a group called uh mia and yami I am Yami, and there's a Japanese guy, um, brethren, um, singer songwriter, multi talented. He's, he have a group called the Bomb, the Boom, mm. and they had already sold millions. And so while I was performing on the stage in Japan, Splash, uh, Spirit came and said, Oh, play your guitar now. And I draw the guitar, you know, and I started to play the guitar. I never played the guitar on stage before. <laughs> cool. And when I did that, um, someone saw me in, in the audience and, and the uh, mayor decided I want to work with Yami and we created this project called Love is Dangerous the same title again, Love is Dangerous yes. and it shoot, it shoot from number 50 to number 2 and the Japanese uh, It's of the World and, and I felt very good to have done that you know, that yeah. collaboration and so when I went into Japan as well um, we did we also develop a bigger following now, you know, yes. like what happened in England, but only thing it happened all over Japan now, yeah, because maybe. we tour we toured in Japan and we did all of Japan. We circled it: Sapporo, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, Kobe. Mm -hmm. You know, we did it all. Uh, we tour and dropped the name all over there, and it was one of the, the great. Uh, times of success for me uh, you know reaching another person people another nation who never uh, spoke fluent english you know yes we had to understand in english and so that's where i get my biggest um connection uh, <laughs> i want to uh -huh. and listen i it's interesting there's a kindred aspect between japan and and you know and jamaica and other island you know nations um and so at any rate i'm glad that that you were so well received there. Now I'm curious as well, Yami, about the spiritual aspect of your music and reggae in particular, but maybe even your own personal kind of experience with Ja as an inspir inspiration for delivering your sound. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, your personal journey in the spiritual aspect that helps drive your art? Well, as a little child, I, my grandmama, Sarah Archer, she responsible for us and she used to send us to Philadelphia church. It started out in the church really. 
And um, after going to City Mission Church, Blunt Street, we was uh, performing in the churches. And the first time I went to Philadelphia Church in Greenwich Farm, uh, Mr. Fitzsenley was playing the piano and the Amory singers were singing and something happened in the church. And then I got the chance to perform in the church, you know, and that never leave my mind that, that angelic euphony song. Yeah. And then I uh, think that the, the most I, knowing that I born in Kingston 13, where the guns and politics was prevalent and the youth was getting, you know, killed through politics. Um, yeah. I think God used me as an instrument coming from that uh, side of town to deliver a message to the youth who would understand me in my ghetto. But it become more bigger than just a ghetto uh, message. It become a more international pyongan cry, you know, a man in the wilderness trying to, you know, urge humanity to come together, you know, with love as the word is misused. And, you know, right. people are not too much into the word love. They think love is evil, spelled backward. And um, so we have to continue to spread the message of love, you know, you know, like we have good and bad, darkness and light. So we stood, we, stood, we stayed with the cultural aspect of the music because we was inspired, um, inspired, inspired by, you know, legend like Bob Marley. Gregory Isaac was my friend and Dennis Brown was my friend. John Holt, you know, and I always look up to the elders like Alton Ellis would tell me, yo, yo, Yami, you leave a hole in the willow tree, man. You, you know, <laughs> you know tell me that, Yami, man, you leave a hole in the willow tree. I couldn't sing it like that. That was a great um, um, compliment for me to hear the great Alta Bliss. Yeah, validation, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And like when Dennis Brown would look at me and tell me, Yami, you are the young prince now. <laughs> you know, it, it, it inspired me to want to continue with the ministry. Yeah, that's beautiful, so, Yami. And what I recognize as well is there's a prevalent theme, you know, through so much of your music where love is the the binding characteristic that unites us all, I think, you know, when we have the ability to experience it and how it makes us feel included. Um, and so, you know, you really have been an ambassador for one love in a very dynamic way. Let me ask this question. What is your current focus? What are you working on now? Well, I'm working on a few stuff. I'm always working, writing. Yeah. Uh, I, find, I find a joy in writing stuff down. And um, we have this project that we want to bring to the world. Um, it's a tribute to Augustus Pablo, a student of Pablo, as Pablo had given me my first keyboard. And um, he was teaching us how to play the melodica. So I have this melodic album that I was working on. And uh, this is one of the focus I want to get out this, this year. Because they know Yami as a singer, but they never hear Yami as an instrumentalist. <laughs> yeah. I have this 13 track album where I'm playing the melodica, you know, as a student of Pablo. And I would love to do this as a tribute because this is the man. And, uh, Jackie Mitu, the great That's piano player. Yeah. I met Jackie Me Too first and in, you know and he taught me that wherever I saw the the first the, the, the two black keys, the first one is C. And I, I never forget that. And when I realized I come to learn that this man that is my friend is the world greatest uh, keyboard player, Jackie Me Too. Yeah. Look up to him. And so now I link up with Augustus Pablo. It was like the two great musicians in my keyboard life. And then um, Juna Delgado was teaching me how to play guitar. Mm -hmm. So we learned something from each elder. And like when I link up with um, Earl Chyna Smith, he was teaching us the guitar as well. So we learned mm -hmm. from our elders, you know, and yeah. um, incorporate it in my Yam Euphony. Yes, music. brother. Give thanks, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And certainly that tribute to Augustus and others, uh, we'll look forward to. Uh, following. In fact, how can we follow you in the digital world? Where are you located and, and how can people connect with your music? Well, right now I'm using Yam You for the music one and Instagram and this little thing on WhatsApp because I don't know, but they keep hacking my face, 
Facebook stuff and my pages. I don't know why they've been doing that. And so we're going to see a few Yami Bolos up there, but I have no connection to them. I and so I don't, I don't pay focus anymore too much on the Facebook stuff. However, I know it is needed, but I kind of stay in the dark, trying to bring a light to the world <laughs> to music. Yes. <laughs> well, you certainly have done it. I mean, for and and you know, in a seasoned career, Yami, for so long, um, with you know, also the spirit of your personality and the joy, um, you know, that and and magnetism that you bring, and just your persona. But your music has such powerful vibrations for inspiring, healing, and um, hope. Uh, and so we are going to look forward to following your progress. We're also happy that. You're on the Phoenix 360 app as well, coming up here. And the links that we'll provide under our interview today will be the ones that you provide to me. So I'm, I feel assured that people will be connecting to the sources that you feel are the right ones. Uh, connection. Yeah, to connect yes. with you. So, yes, definitely. And we have the um, YBMG, Yam and Polo Music Group. Then um, me and my uh, nephew working on, so that would be also uh, a legit uh, way to get, get in contact with us as well. For an emerging artist, you know what I mean, that was coming out and you know uh, maybe in challenges in becoming established, you know, do you have any kind of words of encouragement for them? Well, if they never really ask me, I know, I, I don't like to give, you know, uh, I. Say I don't like to say stuff that someone ever asks for a direction. I don't like to give if they never ask me. That's However, I'd love to say uh, music is like a prayer. Music is a blessing, and music is is God in words. So, whatever we bring to humanity to the music table must be like food that humanity can eat and absorb and, you know, learn from, or be happy, you know. You have different, different level of music and different people love different music, you know. However, we stick with a kind of cultural, positive music, you know, when someone hear it, it might be the opposite of killing someone, like, you know, who would say, put down the weapon, all guns down, you know, stop the shedding of blood. The words like this you will hear in our songs. You know, we won't be glorifying killing someone right. or killing anybody. You know, in fact, we are the opposite of that. That's right. <laughs> Loving embrace, man. Yami, it is such a pleasure to connect with you, bro. Thank you so much. I want everyone to tune into the social media links you find below for Yami Bola. And look for him rising on Phoenix 360. And brothers, thank you so much, Yami. Blessings and You're respect welcome. to you, my brother. Really. You're welcome. It's welcome. All right? Peace, man. Lifeline, the push go. I'd like to put your hands together and let's welcome the culture of one himself. Let's hear it for Yami. Let's hear it for Yami. Bola.
Every 